Hi, we're the Stevers. I'm Leslie. This is Kevin. Welcome to Stevers Candies. We're going to show you the candy kitchen. Welcome to the candy kitchen. <laughs> we do all the cooking of the centers down here. Um, candy stoves and steel table, cream beater, a little bigger than yours. I've seen yours. Yes. Oh, wow. Quite this a is bigger. just a bigger one. Yeah. Um, that was this just been here since mm -hmm. 1939. I tell people, you know, we did move it. We moved it once from the floor out there to to here, and that's that Never was enough again. just with a fork. Yes. We had the kettle lifter to pour heavier things, or if I'm working alone, I can, you know, do that. So is this uh, caramel over here? Or what? Yeah, these are caramel cookers. They spin around and just lower into the kettle. They've got a hydraulic lift on them, and. Those are old Dubin machines, but they will cook it for you and stir it. So I pretty much just use them for caramels and a couple other pieces. Yeah. Um, and this is a bigger one that's a little smaller. They make this one makes about a 50 pound batch of caramel, mm -hmm. and I spread it out on the steel table. It feels about two thirds of that. Hmm. So you guys make your own caramel then? Yeah. Oh right. wow. Yep. Yeah. I can show you that. Cool. This is batches of uh, Dixie Mint that we just made. That's a molasses peppermint. That'll get covered. Uh, and chocolate, cut in little squares. And uh, these are other batches of nougat that we made, that I made, uh, I believe yesterday. These are just different flavors. This is lemon. Um, the caramel are these guys here. And do these get chocolate covered, sort of like a candy bar or something? Or uh, they get squares? cut in little squares. Okay. And then they're one of the pieces in the um, assorted pack. Oh, yeah. Um, this is the caramel that we make. Oh, wow. And they're spread on the table, the steel table, just as a flat surface. And um, I get about 50 pounds from a batch of six trays, and then these will be cut in half, and that goes through the cutter for uh, chopping them up into squares. Yeah, we're still cutting our caramel with a knife. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how you do it. <laughs> so these are ones that we actually have a bunch of caramel made because right now through October Leslie's dipping them every Friday and Saturday uh, for caramel apples oh, right. so yeah. we have to remelt this or that's what we do we remelt, remelt it in little crock pots and then we can kind of manage what we use throughout the day as opposed to trying to do it in the kettle and yeah. have to do it all at once so if, when people ask us for caramel apples we should send them to you then <laughs> yeah in October <laughs> in October if you can get them to do it on Fridays and Saturdays it's a little crazy to try to do it all the time yeah. So. yeah. So we'd special and we just do that. And uh, we'll take it upstairs. There's also, um, of course, the Hobart mixer. It's an old one. This one's a, another machine that's a depositor for um, like peppermint patties, wintergreen patties. They just go through on little plaques. Okay. And so we what make does those. This, mixer make? Or what do you use it this for? one I use for marshmallows, mm. uh, frappe, that kind of stuff. So do you guys make your own marshmallows? Right now? Yeah, oh, I just wow. made that. They're actually they're coating them. Well, they're yeah. probably through now. They yeah. were coating them this morning. Yeah, you so. can try one. It's yeah. all, all, the, all the stuff our viewers tell us to make. I they're know. Made, they're <laughs> making, yeah. You guys make your own caramels. I make them, spread them out with the bars on the yeah. table. Yeah. yeah, they're like a thick, thick cut one. Oh, yeah. cool. So we'll go upstairs. Sorry, it's tight. Oh, we've done. Yeah, it is cool in here. We got stuff everywhere. Oh, nice. Got some turkeys. Thanksgiving coming up. So this is the end of the enrober. This is the the dipping room we call it. Um, wow, some big numbers. Pretzels right now. I guess he's finished with mar marshmallows. That is a large enrober. <laughs> and uh, Jeff runs this thing. Um, depending on the season, like now through Christmas, it runs almost every day. Okay. Um, and we we start and stop it based on you know like for molding a lot. We're doing that with pumps and stuff over here. Then we're not running this. But we, we can, it's a little tight, but we can do all of it at once, too. Okay. So, this one is, uh, you know, the enrober, um, and this is what you're talking about for, for yeah. your purchase. So, so, can you also use that for um, tempering chocolate for molding? Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, it's not quite as practical as they make it out to be because, you know, this thing is mounted over it, and it's kind of there and in the way. Okay. Um, they do have a setup where you can pump out of that reservoir okay. on that side because that's your temperate side. It's a little limiting because of you just can that's how much chocolate you got at a time and then you'd have to re, you know you'd have to move this off no matter what size it was you'd have to move that off and then use use that. Also we cut all the creams this is a our cream cutter this is a an old triumph cookie cutter and this um 
just put the cream in the top and then the, these move pushes them through on plaques and cuts them so we get about 20 boards of eight by probably 10 10 and then they're eight they're eight rows and there's a die that goes in there so you can cut them we have round oval two two dies and then we have an egg die that's like seven wide you got to fix a bunch of different things to get that what to get the eggs through versus uh, creams because of the you got to change all the, the plows yeah um, my dad did yeah again when he bought this location he acquired this machine so we just always use this one same thing it was melters that was not even turned on right now but that's a double one that we use for extra chocolate mostly at Easter when we're doing more and more molding every day and then we pump on the little pumps on the, these machines. These are the Savage melters that I was saying before. And these have the, the digital thing. They kind of arrived with those. It was like, hey, I didn't know I was gonna have this. Because yeah. it also was like this big thing sticking out the side. And I'm like, I don't know if that's gonna fit because I wanna come right up to the table. You know, stuff like that, they don't tell you until you get it there and then you learn. We make all the non with those and all the, um, a a anything with metering. I mean, I still funnel some stuff, but I, I don't really have too much. Um, and it, these are so much more accurate than me with the funnel for, for weights and stuff. And then um, this is just another, well, right now it's just a hallway full of molds. <laughs> these are all molds made for Christmas. Um, they're, they're molded, bagged, tied, ready to go. And so after Thanksgiving, well, there's some Thanksgiving here too because we're like I say, it's both holidays. And then um, these will get these little peeps. They'll get dipped in uh, half dipped in chocolate. I don't know if you do those. We do uh, at just simple. Easter time. Yeah, yeah. peeps yeah. out of puddle. We call we it. We do them uh, kind of all the holidays mm -hmm. if they if they make if they decide to keep making them. You know, it's right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, supply chain issues. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, we do the molding and then this just little vibrating table. Actually, that's the milk one set up. There's another dark one rolled up there. And what I do is I roll that down and put it in front of this one. And this has got dark. So then it's a molding station there. Usually it's one or the other, you know. This is the one I was saying was, this is the 250 pound. That's got the dark in it. So like he, that was full. So he's, you know. He's now, really cooking. Once he puts, yeah. once he puts whatever's floating around in there and there back, it would go up a little. Sure. So it's, you know, but, um, but yeah, we we have a lot of days where we got to kind of take from there and, and or get it from there. Just mm -hmm. add to this. It's a little quicker. Sure. Another thing we did, we made this little hot box, and it's just got a light bulb in there. But that way, you keep all the pipes and everything all liquid, oh, so okay. so you can grab them. And if sure. you want to do. Um, like this, this goes on the end of the, the uh, piping, mm -hmm. and then if, that's what we use for our tray size oh, for okay. not prowls. And when we do the, cro we call them croquettes, but like turtles, we do those on trays and then put the the nut part on after in caramel. Yeah. So then with molding, we use that little room. We have a split system. We shut all the doors, and then we just have fans running. So we get it to like 60. In there, and that's plenty to set the chocolate, and um, and so we're in and out of there constantly. So we're not putting in a little refrigerator. I know you guys use the refrigerators because you kind of try to work in wherever you can. Where you work with what you have. <laughs> right, right. This yeah. when we're doing this system, we just cool that whole room, and then we just we can roll the racks in there. Mm -hmm. So we just put the molds yeah. on the little pin racks and just roll them right in there. And then you know it gets full. You gotta kind of. Work so it's not out. necessarily like refrigerated. It's just, it's just cool. Yeah. Yeah. We find you yeah. don't really need it. You need yeah. the airflow, mm -hmm. and you need like 60 degrees. Mm. That seems to do it. Mm. And actually, in the when we're doing clusters, we have another machine. I'll show you in the starch room there. But the, you have a starch room. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. At Easter, we could bring that machine out here. We usually put it here. Try to get it behind that curtain, and we. Because we got airflow here from the air conditioner, so what we do is we put our pin racks over here, and then just with airflow or with uh, fans, and that thing on all the time, almost they set fine there. Mm -hmm. I find it's a little better for clusters and stuff if just like room temperature, mm -hmm. almost with airflow as opposed yeah, to right, yeah. too cold. 
Yeah, we, we generally do the clusters at room top. Yeah, yeah, so it's like that, you know. So, and then this table, we do use this. This has another layer where we, it's a better surface. And we um, make all the bark and stuff on this. So we spread it on this four by eight table. They're about 35 pound batches. Sure. I want to talk to you about bark too. Sure. <laughs> and then this room we use for, Leslie's doing some packaging here that was, she's got these things in process. She's packed them. Now doing the ribbons and the shrink wrap. And this is the starch room. Mm. Um, these are sort of what I'm talking about. Like she's got them on there, and that's going to get a uh, the ribbon yeah, ne yeah. next. You know, um, there these are like time consuming, so we try to get these done at, at whenever we can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've actually moved away from the baskets because they are such a bottle. Yeah, we we don't do too many of the baskets with the you know with the yeah, handle and everything. Yeah. They seem to get too expensive, and it's yeah. like eh, yeah. you know. And, and you got a to store. place to put them all yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these these do pretty well, yeah. and we yeah. do just a certain number. She she go. I mean, it's hundreds of them, but she just does them, okay. and then they're done. You know, yeah. we don't. Yeah. 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 First no. come, first serve. Get yeah, it, get it. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and. Um, she puts them like on the website too, and they, they don't—they're not really around that long. We—it's yeah, right. like you—you you really kind of. She'll have like thirty-six and forty-eight and whatever mm -hmm. of them, and when it's gone, they're too slow. You—you yeah, you, yeah. you gotta get them done. <laughs> so this room we do use for starch um, at Easter. So I take everything comes out, yeah. and then we use either those are uh, the wooden boards still, and then I have plastic ones stored upstairs too because okay, it's yeah. kind of both. Because we're kind of doing it for just like a week, it's like a really busy week. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we like, it's like 20, 20 boards, it's like 40 boards full all the time. Sure. So we keep sure. pushing them in, push them out. And that's for the marshmallow eggs and bunnies. And we make crosses, yeah. cream crosses, yeah. um, cream pigs, cream. Um, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of different. <laughs> of so it's usually either a cream or a, or a marshmallow. And then um, we make caramello eggs too, mm -hmm. where there are two layers. You got to do half in that. That's just a small batch, and we have to funnel the caramel. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and then I had just have to hand funnel. I don't have a depositor for the for the other, so I'm doing yeah. just like you with the with the marshmallow and all that. This machine is the one that we do the clusters on. That's got a um, that's an older machine, but you basically have a slurry of chocolate on the side, and then you um, it's hard to see here. I got so much stuff. Put a slurry of chocolate here. These are this is heated, and you then you put your chocolate and say you're doing crispies, and you put crispies in with it, and then you have a just one of those plastic scrapers, and it slides over, fills these, and then you pull your extra back, and then this thing slides over. This lowers, which which pushes the cluster through there. Mm. And then, so it's it's almost the action you'd have with a hand funnel because you're yeah. lifting, yeah. and so that's what that is. And then then you just push this back out of your way. Now these are empty again, and this thing is stays down with that board on there, yeah. and it makes whatever the count is there um, at a time on the board. And then we just rack those, yeah. and that's what we end up with a little round cluster. And we're able to do um, the peanut, the cashew and the crispy that way sure. yeah the ca the coconut clusters i funnel them yeah, with a big do. with a big hole on the funnel yeah, see yeah. that's a pretty big hole when you're yeah. you know because it's got a stick that's fatter yeah. um this would be this would be the normal chocolate one with that size hole so i do those that way raisin we do by hand mm. that old-fashioned mm. way because mm. I sticky, can't sticky, get them through sticky. there, and this one you got to have two. Like, it's not enough raisins, yeah. and then customers are like, "Hey, these are kind of light on raisins." Yeah. <laughs> and so you, you know, you you, yeah. you do what you're gonna do. So those are done by hand, yeah. the, the regular, yeah, the old way. And um, we used to do them all by hand yeah. until we found that machine, and um, that was just on an RCI tour. And oh I really? Read that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. That's a souvenir to come home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the butter punch I was saying that. Um, these will go on the platters, but that's those are the ones that went in, you know, when we did the inner over. So what exactly is in the butter crunch? Um, it's just a toffee center, okay. and then 
we want to get chocolate around it, so we're using the enrober to do that part. And then we d have just put a pan with the chopped nuts underneath, and then we just roll them and tray them. So we make a whole project out of that. Yeah. It takes like it takes like an hour to do a batch with two of us. You want to try one? Do you like dark? Sure. These are. These are the ones they just coated. This is the only way I eat marshmallows, I think. Yeah. <laughs> the one they just, just were coated, but you're welcome to have have a little one or a big one or whatever I'll, you... I'll eat, have them Steve will eat. Oh, oh come on, you can take your own, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and we coat those in dark or milk, and then we box them. Um, those, these we have to box not off the belt because they're a little tedious. But anything we can do off the belt, and that would be another thing with this, if you set one two person up there or two people up there, because your chocolate's set, they can get that job done. So with like fruits and things, when they come off, we get the little box and it's two people and they, they get them all boxed seven ounces and they're done. All you do is do the stickers right. afterwards. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. Raw yeah, that yeah they're amazing. good. Yeah. Love it in store bottle. And then we do like, do, I see you with the cups. I do the cups, but I just set them out like that. That's mm. the coconut through that funnel. Mm -hmm. You, you got to be like a good shot, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I don't I don't put them in the frame. I see them in the frame, yeah. Yeah. but I'm the these will get. This is just going to end up either for her platters. She's using these, and then there'll be um a piece in the box in the chocolates in the boxes. This will give a little bit more free form. Yeah, they're just they're just kind of a, just another a piece extra, that's yeah. in the candy box, yeah, yeah. and we do. Um, I guess I guess the coconut are just really popular, so yeah, yeah. Coconut, we do that one. It, right. Yeah, <laughs> and and the, but the coconut the sell really coconut well sell. in the clusters. So, so Alicia is now getting the pretzel pieces. Where a few minutes ago we were getting the whole pretzels. So we have our scale set up uh, with the tear taken out for our bag, and she can pick the pieces up and drop them in the bag, and then she'll weigh them to the correct weight. Uh, then they go in the other room and will get sealed and labeled and put in cartons for stock to go down to the store. So how long is the hole in rover? How long is the hole in <laughs> rover? Well, tunnel is, is 20 feet uh, of cooling. Mm -hmm. And so there's, a, there's a, a marking station about two and a half feet and then a takeoff here about three and a half. Mm -hmm. So add those up 20 and maybe six. So maybe 26 total. 26 and feet from here to Jeff? A uh, note to oh, okay. where the marking station was, okay. and then Jeff's another eight feet, plus the feed belt is another three feet. So it's like a 30 to 40 foot total? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, Whatever that's I said. We'll get a, we'll get a pad, Stephen. You and I will do it out. <laughs> well, <laughs> the YouTubers will let us know. Well, we'll have to, uh, well, we'll have to get a measuring tape, really. You know, we know what I need. I need that guy from this morning that was measuring my roof because yeah. he had a he had a little pointer and he went, oh, I do. I have one of those. Oh, wow. And he's like, okay, okay, 24 feet. I'm like, man, I could yeah, use you. Yeah. 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 For all kinds of stuff. So we do the packaging out here. There's usually a spot to work here, and then there's a spot where Keen is. Another spot over here, and they do all their trimming um, of the molds or the um, pops or yeah. weighing or anything, anything and everything here for stuff we've made. We have a few things that we buy, so we bring those in, and they're, they have to be packaged as well. Um, and it's just kind of always in flux, mm. <laughs> you know. And we're like I say now we got turkeys and Santas, and most of the Halloween is getting sold. Yeah. Yeah. Is that uh, chocolate footballs over there? Yep, chocolate oh, wow. footballs. <laughs> they're real popular. You uh, want one, Dan? Yeah. They're <laughs> popular <laughs> now because the the bills, the bills do well. Yeah, the footballs yeah. sell better. That yeah. Makes sense, yeah, just like Sir Syracuse, <laughs> they probably have more stuff for the orange or plain better. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, we just use the racks, to put all the molds on there, and then eventually they get done. Um, and that's just kind of over and over again, all different Keen's tie and the Santas. And then those mm -hmm. will be either put in packaging in, in cartons, if we can get them in cartons, the bigger ones they have to end up covered on racks. We, they, don't fit, they don't lay down so well because those are hollow. And of course they don't ship, but the solid ones yeah, do. And you know, all, you know that routine. Mm. <laughs> That's kind of the packaging. And she's, she just, I think, moved the stuff so yep. you can see. Yep. These are the croquettes I was saying. We just Whoa. do the, the six shots. 
with that yeah. and they go on there and then we make those downstairs of course mm -hmm. and then we do the chocolate work up here and we just pipe that a little yeah. ass on top so just just a different presentation sure. and covering the whole thing you know sure. um you could just put those right through the inner over of course that's what a lot of times people are after so it just yeah. it depends it look really nice. yeah and they're and they're um they hold up nice too because you know you got the nuts and the chocolate and you can get Issues with oil migration. Oh, oh, when they're yeah. open, it works yeah. a little, it seems yeah. a little better. Oh, okay. Sure. And then this just is a machine that we, we kind of love this thing. This is just a, um, a weigher, but mm. um, we just dump whatever free flowing in the top, and then it just has a vibrating it takes there, and then there's a dribble speed. Yeah. And somebody just sits here. They can do cordials. They can do jelly beans. Mm. They can do foil eggs. Mm. They can do um, sure. anything free flowing is what we say one that won't go through is like jordan almonds because when they fall from there to there they'll break the edges yeah. and so you can't do that anything you know I mean? that will go through there it's so much faster than a, a scale and, and a scoop yeah and a scoop yeah <laughs> oh, I, I noticed you guys have the mirror there what's the mirror for oh uh, when you're sitting that way you can see what's going on in there yeah. that's all i always just love seeing like the customization yeah the yeah they, you know? somebody just that appeared on <laughs> yeah. there one day so i'm like ah, okay that makes sense. <laughs> that's cool i have one in there on my chocolate melter because oh, yeah. my my drip melter into my milk one is kind of high you can't see in oh, there okay, so. but there's a mirror so i i'm like okay yeah. i gotta put more chocolate up there and we just are dumping all yeah, the it's time an analog camera yes exactly <laughs> you do some weighing here we used to do more with um digital label where we put the digi label on the, the exact weight mm -hmm. but now we've kind of standardized the molds so that we it worked better once we switched to having a website and so now they know what the cost is because before it was like every mold was a different price mm -hmm. using using one of these so we've just kind of changed that mm -hmm. over the last I don't know a few years yeah. Yeah. make the French creams they're made ahead for every day and then there's maple mm -hmm. these are these are the uh, they're just little, like a sugar shell, and then they're just a cream inside. And once that's made and solidified, they have a they have a shelf life really great. They probably they, they probably would keep a year fine. Mm -hmm. And then we do those for um, Christmas. We do every day. The Easter colors are those same colors. Christmas we go to white, red, green, mm -hmm. um, and then maple. We make that separate, and those are all year mm -hmm. so. so in here is a temperature and humidity controlled cold room so this is where product comes after it's been packaged and is ready to go down to the store so the staff in the store will make a list and then we'll come up with a cart we'll come in here we'll pull what we need then it goes down to the store and gets put out on the sales floor and all of the boxes over here are all of the chocolates for the boxes of assorted candies. So all of the, this is all the creams, the fudge, the nougats, the chips and straws, anything that's going to go in the box assortment. So the same thing, and that's a process I'll show you in the store. We have a electric packing table downstairs. Whoever's running the packing table would choose what assortment they're doing, because we do five assortments. They would make their lists, they would bring up their cart, they would pull the candies that they need and set the table up the way they want and then they'll be good to go to pack a couple hundred pounds of chocolates and then they'll refill the table as needed. Mm -hmm. um, then we fill these cartons so that we have stock up on the shelves as well as what's in the store. So we always have, you know, oh, we're always rotating, mm -hmm. but we always have um, candy ready to go. You sure do, you have full yeah. stuff. Yes, <laughs> we are, it's pretty full right now. And mm -hmm. these shelves will get full again. He made one circuit of all the candy, um, at the end of September mm -hmm. and now that's when you came in and saw him making the nougats that's the beginning of the next circuit okay. so as we use these down we replenish mm -hmm. yeah. and usually it's three circuits of candy to get us through Christmas mm -hmm. and the last circuit of the candy and the creams isn't totally for Christmas but then we know we're going right straight into packing heart boxes yeah. so it's uh, very organized. ready to go <laughs> yeah yeah well you have to be, and if yeah. you've been doing it as long as we have, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can roll out of bed and do it. <laughs> so Danielle is packing an assortment. Uh, we're actually doing some of our staging for holiday boxes, and, and then that'll go up in the cold room.